Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to class. Can you guys hear me okay? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening. Let's wait for the rest of the class to show up. In the meantime, how is everybody doing? Everybody have a good day? Oh, the presentation, yeah, Kevin. Let me see. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Let me see if I can find it. There it is, I found it, all right. Good evening. Hello, hello, good evening. How's it going, Henry? A little tired, but with with some energy yet. <laughs> all right, all right. Good to hear, good to hear. All right, I was able to find exactly what we needed to look for. Let me go ahead and get some of these. Oh, there's a lot of here. Let me see here. So we have almost, almost, almost. Oh, I think I went too much oh yeah okay this is from an old the well, older presentation but yesterday kevin we were discussing moving forward or looking for looking forward to that's the word that we were working on. So let me go ahead and let me go ahead and put. Hopefully, this helps out in terms of a nation. It makes it a little bit easier for everybody. Go ahead and share everybody. Can everybody see the presentation? Kevin, can you see the presentation? Yeah. All right. Good. Yes. Good. 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 Okay. So what the the terminology type of phrase is what is known so okay and in these there's um in uh, i, I want to say that in english in now people refer to them as el famoso el famoso dicho or famous sayings because most of these have different meanings to the ones that are, are actually beast. You know, um, nosotros tenemos dichos que son un poco famosos. Uh, for example, in Spanish, there's one that says, if you run with wolves, you learn how to howl. Have you guys ever heard of that one? El que anda con lobos. Are you, are you that? Come with? Ow. 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 Ow.
Aullar aprende. There you go. There you go. You got it. Sorry, guys. Sorry. I, a little bit rusty. Eh, este inglés me está costando mucho. Eh, me cuesta el mucho hablar el español. No, eh, eh, hay ciertas palabras. Ciertas palabras, they come and go. Ok. Au, ayu, ¿Cómo es? Aullar. In English is howl. Howling. All right. So it's a saying in English and there's a saying uh, for it in Spanish. Now, um, they kind of fall into the same category. Hello, Delmi. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Give me one second. Let me let me say hello to everybody. Hello, Delmi, and welcome. Hello, Lisette. Hello, Ricardo. good evening. Good evening. Jarvin, Kevin, Alexander, Diana, of course, Henry. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, you guys. Yesterday, Kevin brought up uh, a question. And what we were using was the phrase looking forward to. And I was telling Kevin that these fall into the phrasal verb categories, right? Because they mean a little bit something different than what you are saying or what you are writing. And so let's talk about that for a second. And I think we have a couple of slides only. So hopefully we can, we can use the most important ones here, right? So Phrasal verb is a multi-word verb made up of a main verb and at least one preposition. It can also be a particle that changes the meaning of the verb from the original verb. So for example, you know, what we're using is to break, right? When you guys hear to break, what do you guys understand? What's happening? when you guys hear to break, to break the glass, what are you doing? Romper, quebrar. Romper, quebrar. You're smashing it, right? Okay, so that's pretty easy. But what if you were to use that and you were to say to break away? Mm -hmm. To break away. Vamos a romper para irnos, right? It, it doesn't make any sense, man, right? To break away. Well, that's where the phrasal verbs come in and that's where we change the meaning, right? How are you saying it? How are you using it? And so the picture that you guys see here is a pack and a pack of wolves, you know, a pack of dogs. And one of those dogs moved away from the rest. So what he's doing is he's breaking away. He's breaking away from the pack. Okay. Okay. Now there is a whole bunch of these looking forward to is one of those. Because if you really think about it, I'm looking forward to. Estoy viendo hacia el futuro. I mean, what are you trying to say? Right? If you take it literal, then it doesn't really make sense. But if you use the portion of using it as a phrasal verb, then it does. It, it kind of comes back and you're like, oh, okay. So that's what I'm trying to say, right? I'm looking forward. So I am looking into the future and I have hopes that in the future I will see you. And then so you kind of you kind of go back into that. Now, there's a bunch of these, right? There's a bunch of these. Um, if we are using to break as the example, there is to break away, which is the example that we used with the dogs. You can break down. If you have a car and your car breaks down, you can say to break down. Esto no significa que el carro se hizo pedazos, porque yo creo que aquí en El Salvador hemos visto casos donde hay unos carritos que te imaginas vos que se van a hacer pedacitos, but they don't, right? However, en alguna cuestecita, they do stop, right? And they break down. Something happens and the engine breaks or something. And then so the car breaks down or to break down is an example. Um, if somebody breaks into your house, there we go. Yeah, the metal breaks down. That That is correct. That's correct, Alex. Um, if you put it in acid, for example, if you put, uh, well, iron, right? Iron breaks down by itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, with um, when it when it creates rust, right? So the rust, it's actually the iron breaking down. Yeah, yeah. You got it. You got it. Okay. 
if you are breaking into a house, you know, that's a burglar going into your house and taking your TV, your computer, hasta el ventilador se llevan los desgraciados. Right? So to break into is another one. To break out, like a breakout, like a pandemic. You know, there's 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 people that are getting sick and there's like a breakout. It spreads really, really quick. Uh, yeah, like outbreak. That's it. That's it. That's a good way to use it. If you are in jail and you escape, that is a breakout. You broke out of jail. So the examples that we're using is some of the ones that you guys will hear that are most commonly used uh, to catch up to catch up i mean if you translate it directly it doesn't and it's not going to make sense so you have to take the meaning of it and what is it that they're trying to say so if you hear somebody say to catch up what do you guys think we're doing what do you guys understand when you guys hear to catch up Okay, it could be that we're running and you're trying to catch up to the leaders, right? You're like in the middle or you kind of fell back a little bit and now you're trying to catch up. All right, to blow up. Woo, blow up, like como que estamos rapeando. I'm gonna blow up. What do you guys think? Como que somos musulmanes and we're gonna blow up? No, no, we're not. We're not gonna do that, right? This is a different type of blow up. Like success, like make it That's to the it. top. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Make it. Now, make it to the top. It is also another one. <laughs> make it to the top. All right. Make it to the top. But yeah, that's it. When you succeed, when something goes very big, when something goes viral, you just blew up. Right, so you can say it like that. How about to cut back? To cut back. What do you guys understand when somebody needs to cut back? Have you guys ever been in a job where there's a guy that works very, very hard and he does all his work in six hours? And so now your boss comes to you and says, hey, look, um, you know, el teacher termina todo su trabajo en seis horas. So now my expectation is for you to finish all your work in six hours. What's going to happen? Well, we're going to have a little talk with the teacher and we're going to tell him, hey, you need to cut back on that work because, because of you, they're making us work faster and harder and you know that's not that's not going to work so you can tell somebody to cut back um it happens in many many instances with job related uh things uh it can also happen for example if somebody is over participating How, has that ever happened to you guys when there's somebody that over participates in something all right, so sometimes sometimes somebody can, you know, they, they overdo it. They don't give anybody else an opportunity. And you can also kind of go back and say, hey, you need to cut back a little bit, right? So you can, you can do it that way. Uh, to put up with, to go out with, to check up on, or to cut down on. These are also examples of what you guys can use in terms of phrasal verbs. Now, there's a few here that we use I would say a little bit more than usual. Uh, there's one here that I really like. Let me see here. I have, well, you guys already turn off, right? Take out. Well, we can do that. We can do a little bit of this one. When you guys hear somebody say, hey, I'm going to get takeout for dinner. What do you guys understand? I'm going to get takeout for dinner. What are we talking about? I am going to get takeout for dinner. Salir. 
Maybe, right? Food, fast food. Usually it has to do with fast food. There we go. From the restaurant, yes. How about if I tell you, take out the trash? Take out the trash, right? So it's the, the same. There we go, right? Take out the trash. So you're you're inside the house and you need to take it outside. Yeah, yeah, take out the trash. Yeah, take it outside. Okay, so this is another example uh, of, of, of a phrasal verb that, it, that gets used a lot, especially nowadays. Everybody's getting takeout, right? Um, so they use it a lot. Uh, there's another one that we use. Uh, let me see this one. Yeah, there we go. This one I like. Breakup. We were talking about breaking, right? Breakup. What do you guys understand if somebody has gone through a really severe breakup? There we go, Kevin. They broke his little heart. Yeah, yeah, they broke up. They broke up. So that's how you guys are going to hear it. He just went through a breakup. Um, he needs to break up with his girlfriend or his boyfriend or significant other, right? So these are examples. And so when it comes to phrasal verbs, what you guys can do when you, when you really don't have an idea of what's being said, then more than likely it is a phrasal verb. If something comes your way, and you guys are, are trying to figure out what it is that they're trying to say, more than likely it is a phrasal verb because you guys will see it like that. You guys will see it in a phrase or somebody will say, it, and then they'll say things like, yeah, he's running, he's running really hard to catch up to the leader of the pack, right? And then so when you guys hear it like that, it's really hard to do the translation from English to Spanish just because the words don't make sense once you do, right? So whenever you see it like that is more of the meaning. What is the meaning of the words that are being used? And you have to look at the whole sentence to have a better understanding of how the phrasal verb is being used. All right, everybody good with that? Yeah, get back together, getting back together. Like try to translate that get back together, Pon, ponte de regreso, ponte junto de regreso, no, right, it, it doesn't make any sense, man, that's why, that's why los hermanos lejanos, they sound so weird, right, because they try to do a direct translation from what's being said, and so the idea is for you guys to be able to, to take the meaning, and then be able to translate that, and then turn it into, you know, uh, spoken words, so, all right, uh, Kevin, did this help? Did, did we overkill it? Was it too much? Or were you all right? Were you okay with this, Kevin? I'm, I'm gonna take your silence as a yes. All right, there you go, there you go. Thank you so much. All right, let me close this one. Um, I had already saved it in another one. All right, all right. So let's go. Let's get started with this one. I, I hope I didn't take too much time. I wanted to take a couple of 10, 15 minutes, which we did a little bit, right? We did. All right. How is it going with the modules? Are you guys moving forward? Have you guys completed module one? Anybody middle of module one? Has anybody? Oh, oh, really? Okay, nice, nice to see that. Well, no, no, no. Uh, for 1.2, 1 1.5, and 1.8, they still have not. 1.2, I'm going to put 1.5 and 1.8. They're still working on it. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so please remember that the most important portion of the class are the modules. The modules, the sections, please make sure you guys complete them. The target is 80% completion. Ochenta por ciento de completion en la plataforma. Or 
platform. La plataforma de trabajo or our platform of work. Okay, all right, that's it for this one. We're gonna switch it over to our tongue twister. Ooh, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. So the one that's been the hardest for me has been this one. This one, I, you know, it's through three cheese, trees, three free fleece flu. If I do it slow, I can do it. While these fleas flew, freezy breezy blew. Freezy breezy made these three trees freeze. Freezy trees made these trees cheese freeze. That's what made these three free fleas sneeze. Oh my goodness. See, slow, slow. I think that the more I practice, the more I practice, I'll be able to do it really, really fast. Um, you know, some people say, oh, if your English level is really high, you should have no problems with these. Well, no, it doesn't work that way, right? It is easy if your English level is high. However, the more you practice, the better you get at them. And, you know, there comes a point where you do really fly through these perfectly, but you have to practice, you have to practice. All right, with that being said, and since this one is the hardest for me, who would like to put me to shame? Quien quisiera hacer este y completarlo y decir le gané al teacher. Who would like to volunteer? Lisette, Lisette, do you want to volunteer? Or no, no. Anybody willing to try it? I think Ricardo, Ricardo, let's try this one, Ricardo, let's try it. You have been doing really good with the with the rest of them. Let's try this one. A ver, a ver, a ver. Okay. Through three cheese trees, three free fleas flew. Well, this fleas flew frizzy, breeze blue. Frizzy breeze made these three trees freeze. Frizzy trees made these, these three cheese freeze. That's what made this free, free fleas sneeze. All right, there we go. Well done, sir. Well done. Okay, you see, it, it's a little, it's a little bit hard because of the, you know, there's so many, and then you kind of confuse it with the three and the tree and the, and then so that's where I'm having the biggest problems myself. That was well done, sir. Well done. All right. Anybody interested in doing a little something a little bit easier? Uh, Peter Piper. Anybody else for Peter Piper? Now, when it comes to, uh, I have seen on English interviews, I have seen Betty, I have seen the one that says Betty bought some butter. I have also seen Peter Piper. Uh, some people make you read these. So I would say, hey, you know, why wait till you get into that point? Get a little bit of exercises now. And then that way, if you ever see it, you would be all set to doing it. Uh, this one is, I think it's the easiest for me because I have seen it for quite some time. I've been using it for quite some time. Uh, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Ah, there we go, right? So I'm, I'm, this one, this one, this one we got down. Who would like to try? Anybody else would like to try this one? Peter Piper. We're not moving from here unless somebody else volunteers. A ver, ¿quién más? A ver, voluntarios. Vamos, muchachos. You can do it. You can do it. Más que ando mi camisa roja hoy, dedocráticamente se va a hacer esto. Esta no es mi presentación, es nuestra presentación. Get it? Get it? Nuestra presentación? Because we're communists. <laughs> volunteers, volunteers. Come on, come on, we could do it, we could do it. Who wants to try it out? Peter Piper, this one's easy. Peter Piper. Who wants to do it, who wants to do it? I know somebody wants to try it. Let's go, let's do it, Ricardo. Ricardo, Ricardo les está ganando, Ricardo les está ganando. All right, let's do it, Ricardo. Okay, Peter Piper picked a pack of people peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? 
There we go, right? Where's where's the pack of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? All right, all right, good, good. That's good, that's good. All right, please keep in mind that we have a, a whole bunch that we're gonna have to kind of go through. Eventually, eventually, I think I'm gonna pick on you guys to, to give it a shot, right? Just give it a shot. Pierdan esa pena. Uh, yo diría que it shouldn't even be pena because we're, you know, we're family here. So don't worry about it. All right. So let's move away from this and let's get down to a little bit of business. Okay. So yesterday we started working on some of the vocabulary for us. Let me see if I can make these a little bit larger for you guys, make it easy for you guys. Okay. And we left off in Democrat. That was the last one, I believe. And then we were going to continue with the second, second and third lines, and then hopefully we can get to the third. But if not, we'll leave the third one. I'm, I'm sorry. We'll leave the last one, and then we'll mix it up with another one with another list of vocabulary words that I have for you guys. Okay? So here we go. Let's, let's try it out. Follow me, uh, try to pronounce it. If you guys have your mic off, it's okay, but try to do it, right? Try to do it because the more you practice, the better it is for you. Here we go, here we go. Uh, there's Democrat and then there's Democratic. There we go. Democratic. 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 Depict. Depict. Describe. Describe. Description. Description. Design. Design. Despite. 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 Detail. 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 Determine. Determine. Develop. Develop. Development. Development. Device. Device. Devote. 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 Now, there's another word that you guys will see with this one, which is devotee, which is a double E. Okay? It's a different word, but it has kind of like the same meaning, right? Um, I, I, I am devoted, right? I am a devotee. You can also hear like that. And, of course, devote, right? Devote. I, you're gonna die, right? Die. We can say die. die. Difference. 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 Different. 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 Difficult. 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 Dinner. 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 Direction. 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 Or you can say direction. 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 Right. Both ways is okay. You can say direction or you can say direction, and they're both okay. Direction, direction, direction or direction. Mm -hmm. Director, 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 director. Discover. 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 Okay. You guys are gonna hear that some of these words, even though there's an E there, you usually pronounce the first letter the loudest, like the D sound, right? Develop, develop, okay? So whenever you guys see them set up like this, and there's actually a rule on how to pronounce when there's an E as a second letter, right? So hopefully we can get to that. Um, I'm gonna ask Kevin, yeah, because Kevin, Kevin brought it up today. Good memory, Kevin. Kevin, can you remind me tomorrow to talk to you guys about the rules for how to pronounce the E? Because you have to be careful with this one as well, right? Sometimes you pronounce it and it really sounds out, and sometimes you don't. So, right, ojo con eso, ojo. All right, we're going to keep going. Next word, discuss. 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 Discussion. 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 There we go. We're having a discussion. Discussion. 
we're having a discussion. There we go. Disease. 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 Do. 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 Doctor. Do. Doctor. 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 There we go. Dog. 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 Door. 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 Now, some people, some people say, why do we pronounce it like that if there's a double O? If there's a double O, we should pronounce it like in poor. But there are rules to that as well. And that's why we don't say door. We say door. door. Right? Door. Like if there was only one O. Door. 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 Okay. Down. 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 Draw. 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 Dream. 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 Drive. Drive. Drop. 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 Drug. 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 During. 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 Each. Each, 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 each. Early. 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 East. 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 Easy. 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 Eat. 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 Economic. 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 Okay. Economic. Economic or economic. Well, it economic. depends on it depends on what you want to say. So you can say it both ways. Economic or economic, how did you say it? Say it one more time. Economic or economic. There we go. Yeah, both ways, both ways were economic or economic. Yes. You can say it both ways. Okay. Thank and you. so when you come to this word, economy, that's where you, you know how you can say it the same way, right? So economic or economy. Okay. Economy. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Edge. 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 Education. Education. This one you can say effect or you can say effect. 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 Right. So you can say it both ways. Okay. Effort. 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 Eight. 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 This one you can say either, yeah. or you can say either. Either. Now, either. both of them are okay to use, and you should have no problems if you guys pronounce either or either. You guys should be okay. Election. Election. Else. 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 Employee. 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 End. End. Energy. 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 Enjoy. 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 You can say enough. 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 Or you can say enough. 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 So you see how there's enough. one, there's one that sounds like there might be just a uh, enough. And there's one like it sounds like there's an I either. Sorry, I E. Enough. 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 Enough, enough. or enough. You can say it either way. Enter. Enough. Enter. 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 Entire. 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 Environment. 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 This one, this one is hard for us because there's a big old Ron in the middle, huh? Y ustedes saben que el Ron aquí el Salvador super pega. Environment. Environment. There we go. Environmental. Environmental. Episode. Episode. And equal. Equal. All right. So we actually did manage to cover all of them, all the way from democratic, all the way up to equal. 
Now, were there any words here that, that you guys might not have seen before? The second one, depict. Ah, depict. This one is used when you are, let's say, for example, you saw something happen. You saw a fight. And they ask you to please depict what that fight looked like to describe. To re Yeah, there we go, Rick. That's it. Um, it. It gets used a lot when you have to draw something. They ask you to draw a painting. They ask you to draw a un dibujito. Um, so they tell you, can you please depict the person who did uh, I would say that it happens a lot when you are a witness to something. Can you please depict? And then so you have to describe and it, you have to take it a little bit further because sometimes they ask you to draw it, right? To make a drawing and depict um, either what happened or the person that you saw. All right, good word though, good word, depict. Any, any other word on here? Everybody good? Yeah. Everybody good, okay. All right, so that is our vocabulary exercises for today. And now we're gonna go back into the platform and some of the important key takeaways that we're gonna go over. Um, how many of you guys got to the point where you saw a video talking about non-clauses after B? After B. As you say, as you say, actually, I think that's the name of the video. There we go, there, yeah, yeah. So now, to talk about just the B in non-clauses, it, it kind of sets, you know, a very, very small percentage of what you guys will see. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk in general about non-clauses and where do they fit or where does the after B fit? Right. And then that way you guys have a, a bigger picture of what it is that's being used. Okay. So we're going to start it off with giving you guys an explanation of what is a, a non-clause. Okay. Now for this one, I'm going to ask you guys to help me read some of these slides. Uh, I have a few slides. They're really short. Right. So if I ask you to read, it'll only be like little portions of it. So uh, like this one, I think, is one of the longest ones. One of the longest ones. I'm sorry. Uh, who can help me read what is a non-clause? Volunteers. Yo, teacher, yo quiero. Yo, yo lo voy a hacer, teacher. Lisette, Lisette. All right, Lisette. Ya, ya la escuché, Lisette. Gracias. Señorita, por ese coraje. That courage. Thank you, Lisette. Take it away. Okay, and, and that's it, Lisette, that's it, that's it. Yeah, thank you, thank you, that's it, that's it. Thank, but it wasn't so hard, it wasn't hard. All right, you got it, right? A non-clause is a clause that plays the role of a noun. Ah, ah, todo raro, right? So the examples are the non-clauses that have been shaded, okay? I like what I see, okay? A non-clause has a subject and a verb. In this example, the subject of the clause is I and the verb is see. I like what I see, okay? I know that patience has its limits is the second example. The subject of the clause in this one is patience and the verb is has, has, okay? So now we have some examples. I like innovation and I know people. Now, why do we have them set up this way? Okay, the words that are in bold are all 
nouns. And so that proves that the shaded clauses in the first two examples are functioning as nouns. Okay. And so this is, I want to say that this is still a little bit, you know, a little bit shady. It can get a little bit clearer than that. And so let me go ahead and show you a little bit in a clearer fashion. A non-clause is a subject and a verb that functions as a noun. It is not a noun. It functions as a noun, okay? And so what is the example that we're using, okay? Subject of the clause is you, and the verb is the wish. Whatever you wish is my command. Whatever you wish is my command. And so the whole portion becomes a non-clause because you have you and wish right there. Whatever you wish is my command. And that, those two words here, make the complete first portion a non-clause, okay? There's a second example. I know where the treasure is. We have the treasure, which is the subject, and we have the verb, which is is. And that makes the whole second portion, beginning at where, a non-clause. Whatever, where. Okay? Now, there's other things that you should look into when you guys are looking at the phrases. The subject, who are we talking about? And the verb that's being used. All right. So these two examples help out a little bit, but it does get better. It does get better and it does get easier. Okay. I pointed out that there were some words at the beginning of these phrases. And so whenever you guys are reading and you guys are listening to a conversation paying attention to a conversation, and you guys hear the phrases or the words starting with who, whom, whose, which, that, if, whether, what, or when, lo que le siga, whatever comes after that, that will be a non-clause. So I think that's the, that's the easiest way to think about it. Let's look at some examples, okay? What Billy did shocked his friends. Because what is here automatically uses Billy and did, and it creates a non-clause from the very beginning, from the W all the way to the D. That is a non-clause being used as a subject of a verb. What Billy did. Another example is Billy's friends didn't know, oh, oh here it comes, that he couldn't swim. So now that is letting you know that everything that follows will turn all of this portion into a non-clause. What, that, here's what again, there's that at the end. But it doesn't necessarily have to be just what and that. If you guys are reading and you guys see who, what follows it, is going to make that portion of the phrase, what is that going to, what is what is it going to convert to? Noun clause. A noun clause. That is correct. Teacher, why is this necessary? Well, you know, it's, it's necessary in general grammar. If you guys are writing, um, if you guys are writing a letter, if you guys are writing a note, if you guys are writing phrases, sentences, that's where you use it the most. In spoken English, it's very rare to hear, but when you do have to use it, 
you just have to make sure that you do it properly or else it's going to sound kind of weird okay now what you guys won't hear is that at the very beginning now it could happen but it's very rare and people might look at you funny now it's not wrong it's just that people never use it they don't say uh let's say for example that this portion here where it says Billy's mistake was, was not here. Let's say that it just starts with the that. The sentence would say that he refuses to take lessons. You know, that he couldn't swim. That Billy drowned. It's not wrong, but it just doesn't sound right. It sounds like there's something missing. And so you guys are never going to hear that being used at the very beginning of a sentence. Okay? But in case you do, don't worry about it. It's not wrong. It just sounds weird. All right. What word or words will usually introduce noun clauses? Give me an example or examples of words that introduce noun clauses. Cloth. A ver, let me, let me, dedocraticamente, a ver, vamos, are you okay, come on. All right, let's see. Jose Roberto, can you hear me? Are you, are you there, my friend? Jose Roberto, J, J-R. Yeah. J-R. Can you give me an example of a word that introduces a non-clause? Maybe about. No, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Can you see my screen? Uh -huh. Yeah, so look at these are the words that introduce non-clauses. So can you give me one word that introduces a non-clause. Right now, I have no idea. Any, <laughs> it's all right, it's all right, JR, it's all right. So any of these, right, any of these, it could be who. Whenever you guys hear who at the beginning of a sentence, anything that follows will automatically turn into a non-clause. Okay, because who is there? So who is an introduction to a non-clause? Who, whom doesn't get used too often, but you guys will hear it. Whose, which, that, if, whether, what, when. Yeah. There was another example that came up, whatever. That is another example of a word that introduces a non a, a, I'm sorry a non a, a noun clause so you guys will see whatever you guys will see words like with where and so okay mother who whom whose which these will introduce non clauses okay let me give you guys some more examples now this is an example on where we are using that. And so this is what I was telling you. You guys can use it. It just doesn't sound completely, you know, like, like it makes sense. So listen to that. Listen to it. That she did not pass the exam is obvious at this point, right? That she did not pass the exam is obvious at this point. So in this particular case, you can use that and it's being used as a subject, okay? that what you have said makes her sad what you have okay that she did whichever you buy there is a six month guarantee so whichever you buy there is a six month guarantee whichever you buy there is a six month guarantee Whoever made this cake is a real artist. Whoever. So these are examples of you using a non-clause as a subject. 
a noun clause as an object and a noun clause as a complement. And these are the different examples that we can see. He works at night. Where does he work? It would have to be, where does he work? So yeah, but you got it, yeah, that's it. Where does he work, all right? Okay. All right, so I wanna show you guys a couple more of these. These are some examples of non-clauses. The noun clause is shaded and the subject of the clause is bold. And the verb of the noun clause is underlined. Here is where you can you or you guys will see is. I know that the story is true. The noun clause, the noun clause is that. That's where it starts and it ends all the way to true. I know that the story is true. I saw how the accident happened, how the accident happened. I understand why it was necessary. I know who said that, who said that. You guys notice that we have that and then everything else is a noun clause. We have how and everything else turns into a noun clause. We have why and we have who. Whenever you guys see those, it will automatically turn or introduce the noun clauses that are following it up. Where he works. There we go. Yeah, there we go, Kevin. Okay, there's a couple more examples. Remember, the function of a noun clause can be a subject, an object, or a complement. So here are some examples. If you are using it as a subject, you start off with whoever smelt it, dealt it. Okay, have you guys ever heard that? Whoever smelled it, dealt it, no? If you smell it first, what are, what are we talking about? Sentiste el tufito? Nadie más lo sintió, vos si lo sentiste. If you smelt it, you dealt it. Wow. <laughs> very impolite, very impolite. Okay, my command is whatever you wish whatever and then everything else turns into a noun clause okay this is the subject complement i will give you what you said what you said i will give what you said some thought once you read it through the noun clause is an indirect object it's very rare but it does happen i will give what you said some thought and we can use it in that way and some popular phrases that you guys will see these are examples being used in real life situations uh, actors uh, i think we have some writers we have different people that that made phrases or that use phrases. And these are examples of non-clauses being used in a normal conversation. Ask your child what he wants for dinner only if he's buying. What he wants for dinner becomes a noun clause. Oh, I didn't put like something there. Okay, all right, got it, got it. Right. He knows all about art, but he doesn't know what he likes. So that is a noun clause. Fran Lebowitz, James 
Thurber. It is even harder for the average ape to believe that he has descended from men. H. L. Mekin. Okay, so these are examples of noun clauses being used in an actual conversation, in an actual phrase. Okay, I never know how much of what I say is true. Aquí está. What I say automatically becomes a noun clause. I keep pronouncing that wrong. Sorry about that. Noun clause. Man is what he eats. My one regret in life is that I am not someone else. That. Okay. So what is the rule? Once you guys see in a phrase a word like what, what is the word what introducing? What does it introduce? No close. There we go. You got it. You got it, Henry. You, you could have said anything and you're going to be right. <laughs> there we go. Noun. That is correct. A noun clause. Plural for clauses. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hopefully, let me see if I can. I think I might have. I, I believe I have some role plays. Actually, you know what? I don't think we're gonna have time for that. What I did have for you, and I think we're gonna have to do that tomorrow when we come in right after our tongue twisters, is an exercise where all we have to do is use a WH word. I wonder, what can I put here? Let me see if we got that right. Let me see if we got that right. Yeah, that's it. I wonder what restaurant first sold the sandwich. All right. So we'll do that when we'll finish that one tomorrow when we come in. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you guys back two minutes. A little bit quiet for you guys today. I think tomorrow we're gonna have to we're gonna have to call out by name. Oh. Uh, thank you, thank you, Kevin. Thank. You. And remember, Kevin, you have a reminder for me tomorrow. Yes. The, e, the E sound. All right. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you so much for joining. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Adios. Adios. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Good night. Bye. Till next time. <laughs>